Elle from Stanton House. Welcome to Cyber Go to Market Girl Talk, the go to podcast for women in cyber. During this series, we will be exploring the background of female go to market leaders in cybersecurity vendors. And I'm delighted and honored to be joined on this series by seven successful females to hear about how they got to where they are today and the challenges they overcame in doing so. I hope you enjoy the series. And if you would like the opportunity to feature on future seasons, please do get in touch. Thanks for listening. I look forward to sharing each episode with you bi-weekly. Very delighted uh, to be joined by my second guest of the series. Um, so Diana Andrel, Director of Global Talent Acquisition at Vector AI, um, a cybersecurity leader in threat detection and response. Diana, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on the series. Um, it's really lovely to have you here. Um, but yeah, I guess in the first instance, I'd love to hand over for you to introduce yourself. I know that you've got um, a wealth of experience um, leading talent acquisition functions in the cybersecurity space. You've operated from both sides of the fence um, in terms of both external and internal recruitment as well. So I think that the experience you've got is going to really help um, some of the uh, individuals that are going to be listening to this as well. Um, so tell me a little bit about your experience and how how you got into the cyber world. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, I, I'm actually the global head of um, talent acquisition as well as employee relations at Vector AI. Um, we are in the um, threat detection and response space within cybersecurity. So, you know, uh, a more holistic approach of uh, as I like to say, kind of finding the bad guys so that we can take care of everything that's within um, that cyber world from a security perspective. Um, and I've been here for just over two years, um, lead a great team and we, um, you know, we recruit for, you know, pretty much everything within what well, we do recruit for everything within the company. Um, and uh, in terms of my previous background, just, you know, a, a little bit, I've, I've been in the recruiting field for over 25 years um, in various aspects, but the majority of it has been in the tech, tech space. I've done a little bit with hardware, a lot more with software, and then really found my niche in the cybersecurity world when I... Um, I was at Aruba Networks, which has a security component. I was there for about four years, also leading a global talent team. Um, and then from there, I went to Sky High, um, which is definitely in, in just the security space, the cybersecurity space, and was there for um, a little over three years, again, leading the overall um, global talent acquisition team. Um, and I think with with kind of touching on it at Aruba and then really having 100% of my focus um, at Sky High being in that cybersecurity world. Um, and now at Vectra um, doing the same, you really kind of uncover how, um, how meaningful, I guess, what we do as a company, as an industry is for not only, you know, companies in any vertical, but also for individuals like you and me, and we can touch a little bit more on that. But um, yeah, I guess that's a little bit more about, you know, me and, and uh, some of some of the different avenues and experiences that I, I have in my wheelhouse. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. And um, I wanted to dive kind of straight in. And uh, as you were speaking, um, it was re-reminding me of uh, my experience getting into recruitment and actually moving into the cyberspace. And um, when I when I first got into recruitment, I kind of had an option. I think I've shared this story maybe before, but I've, I've had an option where I was either going to go with accounting and finance folk or I was going to go with cybersecurity folk. This was when I was in the UK. And I actually, um, at the time, I was really fearful about even considering working in cybersecurity because I thought people wouldn't be able to take me seriously, that I wouldn't understand it, that I, I didn't have a place in the cyber world. Um, and I think that it's such a misconception that so many people have is that you need to be a hacker or you need to be a coder or you need to be really yes. technologically astute. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so did you... 
Did you always think that you would end up in, in cyber or did you have that moment where you're like, ah, oh, actually, I, I can work in this space? Yeah. Well, I think because I've worked in the tech industry in various, uh, various niches of the tech industry for so long that when I initially kind of made the jump to cyber, I, I wasn't scared by it or anything like that. I just thought for me, I've been able to pick up enough of what other companies were doing. Like, you know, I was in the semiconductor space for a while. You know, I didn't know anything about semiconductors other than their chips that go in computers. Right. Um, and you know, I spent a long time at eBay. And so, you know, that was a completely different platform technology. So for me, I think moving into cyber, yeah, I would say I was a little apprehensive maybe at first because I, I didn't know how technical I would need to really be from a talent perspective to have people take me seriously. Um, but as with anything else, um, you pick it up, you learn enough so that you know how to sell it and how to be involved and, and always asking questions to find out more so that you can be relevant. Um, so I, I hope that answers that your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think you've highlighted the importance of the fact that as long as someone's got that curiosity to learn, you need to be like a little yes. sponge, like absorbing as much, as much information, as much as, learning absolutely. as possible. Exactly. So, so yeah. So, so I guess to kind of delve into some of the questions then that I wanted to cover off. So I'm acutely aware that um, probably a lot of females out there, you know, as I've already kind of alluded, might think that you have to have a certain type of skill set to be able to, um, I guess, operate in cyber. Um, but actually, that's not necessarily the case, right? There are so many different roles. Um, and so as someone who is heading up talent acquisition in a cybersecurity vendor, how can females, uh, do you think, identify the different types of roles that, that might actually leverage the skill set that they've got? I mean, you know, what's kind of, uh, what are the roles you're recruiting for, I guess, kind of across the spectrum that you typically come up that, that we, we might not think of? Right, right. So, I mean, I think there's what you would typically think of in a cybersecurity company, which would be developers, right? I mean, that's kind of the, you know, you always need developers that are specific in that cybersecurity space. Um, what does that mean exactly? It can mean a lot of different things, but there's a lot more um, opportunities in the education setting. Um, there's there's a fair amount of universities now that have a cyber um, uh, course, um, not only just one class, but but an actual directional course within a software engineering major, as an example. So there's that. There's also, you know, um, a huge amount that we hire in the technical sales area. So regional sales managers, um, security engineers, or sales engineers as they, that's the same, same job, um, customer success managers, professional services individuals. Um, we have a track that is, um, it's, they're called consulting analysts, but they're part of that professional services side of things. And so there's that whole realm and I, I kind of bucket it together because it's part of our global sales organization and it all touches the customers in different aspects, right? So um, that's an area where, um, especially if you're a, a field sales person, um, we do really look for somebody who has a really good understanding of how cyber works, right? So, because you're selling that to a customer. But at the same time, you don't need to be technical to do that job. You just need to really understand and do your homework and have the relationships to be able to sell in that space, right? Um, and same with the customer success managers, professional services, you don't need to be technical. It's helpful, but you don't need to be. You just have to have that understanding um, because you are told touching ultimately the customer. So there's that whole piece. And then there's the marketing side of it. Our marketing people 
don't need to have a cybersecurity background. Mm -hmm. They need to want to be in a marketing function within a cybersecurity company. You know, Mm -hmm. they're dealing with demand gen, so helping that sales organization or the branding Mm -hmm. side of things, which is really branding, PR, you don't have to have that knowledge of cybersecurity. Um, so I think sometimes people forget that there's the, I hate to say it more like the day-to-day jobs, but there's the marketing, there's all the GNA functions, right? Finance, legal, HR, recruiting, um, where none of us necessarily have to have a cybersecurity background or a technical background. Um, is it great if we have worked in other cyber companies? Absolutely. Um, and some of that is more the knowledge of how kind of um, the process works, right? Especially if you're in a finance or a business operations role, understanding how a sales cycle for a software um, sell right? Like we are a software platform. We do stuff in the cloud. So our sales cycle is different. So that affects different parts of the company. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot that I think people don't necessarily really think about. They just think, oh, well, I'm not a technical, I'm not a developer. Mm -hmm. So how could I possibly go to such a technical company? it really, if you have a desire, if you have an interest to be in this space, there's so many opportunities, I think, to explore um, different jobs because there's a lot of jobs that are, they're the same at every company. The difference yeah. is the industry that you're in. Yeah, no, no, it makes sense. And actually something that you, you had mentioned there was, um, was kind of sticking out in my mind is that, um, you know, you said that people, if they've got, perhaps experience working in other cybersecurity is great, that's really helpful, but you don't have to be kind of very technically minded necessarily. I guess it depends on the role, so it's a little bit generalised. Yeah. But do you think it's, would you say it's always a prerequisite that if someone, um, you know, uh, should really have a cyber background if they want to join, join a cyber company, or if they don't, what do you think, t- what sort of certain things can they do to help themselves stick out from the crowd if they want to actually make that move into cyber. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of it, and you pointed that out, a lot of it is really going to be dependent upon the job. So if I look at, uh, let me take a a field salesperson as our example here. Um, In our organization, we really, really do want somebody who has that cybersecurity background if we're hiring them as a field salesperson, because it is a different sell than a consumer-based product or a hardware-based product, right? It's just a very different sell. So we really do want somebody who has that ideally or a software experience in the software industry. So Mm -hmm. there is some some wiggle room. Um, In other parts of the company where we don't necessarily um, require that that knowledge or background, but maybe it would be preferred. And if somebody doesn't have that, I would highly recommend that, you know, on somebody's LinkedIn profile, as an example, a person puts right in their objective or, or um, their interest that, you know, really strong desire of moving into the cybersecurity world. I have a, you know, or having a strong interest in the cybersecurity world. I think that's helpful. I think also, um, you know, working with companies like partners um, or customers that maybe have been, um, have some exposure to cybersecurity companies or vendors is equally as helpful. Um, So we work with a lot of partners from a sales and marketing perspective. And so um, if somebody's worked at a partner that we've worked with, they may not necessarily have cybersecurity experience, but they have experience working with potentially a cybersecurity company. So I think things like that are very helpful. And just making sure that that's noted on somebody's profile, their bio, their resume, um, because that's what we're going to pick up on. If we, if we don't see it right away, we're not going to know. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, it's important to be doing um, as much as you can to try and showcase at least that that interest because I think yeah. the motivators and the genuine interest in someone who's got the curiosity to learn 
those are traits that you can't really teach so you either right. you're either inclined that way or you're not but what you can teach obviously is you know about the product and I think as long as companies have a strong onboarding program um, to be able to really teach it to the best of their ability then in theory the rest should follow um, I spoke Absolutely. to I spoke to a CRO recently who um, basically said that, um, you know, he he deals with a, a lot of individuals, peers within his level that when they're recruiting, they're really narrowly specific, looking at not just cyber security, but the various different areas of cyber that obviously there's so many different facets that make it up. And people can be really kind of caught up on this person needs to have AppSec specifically or, you know, whatever it may be. But the point is, is if someone knows how to, to sell, you know, and they've got that curiosity to learn um, and you've got a good onboarding uh, program, they should be able to, to sell that product in the first. Exactly. So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting um, that there are some things that you can do. Do you ever have you ever, ever had an experience where you've had to kind of challenge any of that pushback with any of your peers previously at all? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, again, I in certain jobs that we're hiring for, um, I always, and I will, I'm going to pick on sales again, because that's kind of it's such a big area that we hire for. And it is probably the one where they're the most specific with that being part of what they're looking for. Um, but I push back all the time. Because part of the pushback is, the cybersecurity industry is still in its infancy, if you look at it from a grand scheme of things. And so there's not a ton of companies that have been around for over 10 years in the cybersecurity space. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to bring in individuals who have more than 10 years of experience, as an example, you're not going to get all of that being in the cybersecurity world. You're going to get some variances of that. And and so really trying to educate different people that I work with internally to say, there's a time and a place when, yes, you really need that strong cybersecurity background. There's also a time and a place where you can give a little bit there and focus on somebody who's maybe come from a different technical background who has that um curiosity, that thirst for knowledge, um, and who can pick things up very quickly. Because in my mind, in many areas, I think if you're good at whatever it is that you're good at, mm -hmm. in my world recruiting, if you can recruit, if you're a good recruiter and you can recruit it, you know, for um, uh, engineering at uh, Cisco, and you're great at it and you've proven yourself that you can go to a startup and recruit for product marketing people. It kind of, if you've proven yourself that you're good at something, then you should be able to be good at that wherever you go. And so that's kind of my philosophy. And so I try to push back with that philosophy and also to broaden the, the diversity landscape. Not everybody's going to have 20 years of sales experience in cybersecurity. That just doesn't, doesn't work like that. So if we're going to broaden the diversity landscape, it's where can we give in, in challenging the status quo of let's look at the areas that we can give a little bit here. Yeah. Is industry one of them? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I always try to advise when I'm working with, um, you know, and partnering with individuals that are recruiting, typically you would expect that your candidates probably have maybe 70, 75% of, of the job description. Um, if someone could do 100% of it, there's probably a question mark on why they're going up for that role in the first place, because they're going to get Absolutely. bored. <laughs> yes. They're going to yes. know it all. They're going to have to, they need to have some learning. They need to have some stretch as well. So, you know, you're right, it's about being able to, to challenge back and, and constructively challenge um, as well. Absolutely. How do you find your your challenges received? Have you, um, yeah, how, how, how do you find it? <laughs> uh, depends on the person. Yeah. Um, more times than not, um, you know, when I'm having a conversation with, with 
one of the hiring managers or executives, um, they're open, right? They're, they're definitely open to that challenge, but, you know, and, and a lot of times it's well received. It's, you know what, you're right, Diana. Like, yes, I hear you. I get it. Let's, let's see what else we get in the mix. Um, but then there's others that are, I hear you. I don't agree with you. Right. So there's always going to be some of that. Um, but part of my role is to really continue to pro provide that guidance and advice and, and to challenge because if I don't, then the hiring is going to be the same always. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind me asking, do you do you know if the when you do have the challenge back, does that predominantly come from your male peers or your female peers? Depends on the individual, um, because you know there's there's tough cookies, regardless <laughs> of, of you know gender, right? Um, but uh, for the most part, I, I get a little bit more of that, I think, with with some of the, the male leaders that I work with. Um, but, you know, having said that, um, you know, I, I'm thinking of, of one of the leaders I work with right now. He is a huge proponent of bringing diversity into his organization. And so, yeah, he, he listens 100% and he's willing um, to take a few risks um, because it's the right thing to do. Um, and risks, maybe not the right word, but he's willing to kind of give a little bit more. Um, and I've had equally, I've had female leaders that I've worked with that are far more stringent on some of those, um, requirements. So it, I think it just really depends on the individual and, and the role that they're playing and what they're looking for. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's refreshing to hear, though, that you've you know you've got a current experience where it's it's your challenge back has been welcomed and taken seriously, and you know that is that appreciation for um, bringing diversity and and having a focus on that as well. Um, yeah. As someone in a you know uh, as, as kind of a, a talent acquisition executive in this space. What would you recommend if we're thinking about females more specifically? Um, what would you recommend that they could do to elevate their profile in cyber vendors, given it is so uh, heavily dominated by, by men? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, again, kind of um, revisiting a little bit of what I mentioned earlier on, I think, um, you know, LinkedIn is obviously a huge place where recruiters, hire managers go to look for potential talent. So I think showcasing on your profile that cyber is a big interest to you. If you've worked with any partners or customers that are in the cybersecurity space, making sure that's noted. I think that is huge. I think the other piece is, you know, doing some, some upfront research. Um, so, you know, if, if I were looking for a job and I wanted to be in cyber and I hadn't had that exposure experience yet, I'd really want to investigate the different types of companies because there's a lot of us out there that focus on different avenues and aspects of cybersecurity. So, you know, becoming well-versed on the different companies and the space that you want to focus on, um, I think is huge. And also looking into those companies to see what different people are doing. Um, you know, you, you can look at who's on the board. You can look at the executive leadership teams of those companies. You can do a, a little bit further digging and find out, you know, you can do a search on who works at that company, um, and maybe see what the demographics look like and see who's doing what, um, and possibly reaching out to maybe you see a female, um, executive or a female, um, you know, marketing professional, if you're in marketing, um, that works at that company and just reaching out to that person and introducing yourself, not asking for a job, but maybe asking to kind of, you know, 
hey, would you have 10 minutes? I could just pick your brain. I know you don't know me, but it's sort of taking that step and not being obnoxious about it, but more curious about it. I think that is, could be very helpful um, for anybody who wants to try to get into this space is, is really showing that curiosity. Yeah. I think it's um, something like that can be stepping outside your comfort zone, right? You know, absolutely take take a lot of gumption to be able to reach out to some, you know, very senior people as well that especially for those that are much earlier on in your career, um, it can be a relatively kind of daunting thought. Hey, I'm getting in touch with this C suite level individual. Right. What, yeah. what on earth are they going to think of me? Um, so, so yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, in in your, but, I guess. Oh, sorry, you go. Yeah. I was just going to say, just on that note, I, yes, I think it is. It does take. It does take somebody who can who can kind of step outside their comfort zone to do that. But at the same time. A lot of female executives, myself included, if I've, I've had, you know, early in career um, recruiters reach out to me that want to, you know, they're not necessarily looking for a job, but they want to have somebody to talk to. I'm more than happy to spend, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes with that person. Um, and I don't know if I've been helpful or if I haven't, but I would hope somebody would have done that with me. Or if I look at my daughters who are, you know, in college right now, like I would hope that somebody would do that for them. So it's, and I think, I, I think women are more apt to respond because they want to help the next generation. Mm. And my, that's my personal philosophy there. There's something in that then there as well, because I think that a lot of this does, you know, and again, this is a very generalized statement, but the majority of this education seems to fall on women quite a bit. But actually, I do think that there's a part that um, our male counterparts can play. And Absolutely. Yeah, they, you know, and, and a lot of them do. A lot of them, this is very yep. much on their agenda. And I'm certainly speaking to a lot of CROs or CMOs or, you know, sales engineering leads and, and very much, you know, for them, it's important to have that diversity of thought if we're partnering with them and, and you know, really being able to promote females coming into this space. Um, but maybe perhaps there's a little bit more that, that, that men men can do because they can perhaps provide a different perspective um, as well, yep. uh, which can be helpful. I know that one of one of the individuals um, that I've, I've reported to before at Stanton House who is still still very well connected and, and I see them like a mentor um, is, is male and, and actually he, he's able to challenge me very constructively in ways that I, you know, might not be able to um, and, and vice versa. I'm sure I probably challenge him in certain ways as well. So uh, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's a two way street, but yeah, I think there's something in that is perhaps men, you know, if there are any males out there operating at that kind of C-suite level, they're in cyber. If you have a female that reaches out to you that wants five, 10 minutes of your time, who wants to have a conversation um, you know, can, can you hear, hear them out? Hear us out, please. Let us, yes, let us yeah. get some time to speak. Um, so yeah, no, it's interesting. Why, um, why do you think then it's important, uh, to increase diversity in cybersecurity? Well, I mean, you, you called out the, the statistic, right? 24%, um, of, uh, people in cybersecurity are female. I mean, I think you and I would agree we can do much better than that. Um, And I think it's unfortunate because, you know, if you, if you go back in from an academic perspective, um, I think the stigma is in order to get into a technical company, whether it's cyber or whatever, Mm -hmm. you have to go the route of being an engineer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the statistics are, they're right out there. 
the percentage of, of females that go into, you know, engineering, um, degree programs, um, it's, it's very low. Um, and I mean, from a holistic diversity perspective, there are other demographics that are very statistically low that go, that go into any sort of engineering, um, degree program as well. So it's, it's a much larger problem than just, uh, females that going, going into the cyberspace. But I think that's part of the stigma is that that's sort of what people think. Um, Mm -hmm. and that's not accurate at all. Um, because you don't have to be an engineer, as we've already talked about, to get into cybersecurity. You have to have the the interest, the knowledge. Um, and I think, you know, what people don't talk about as much um, is what cybersecurity really means for those, for everybody in the world. Um, you don't have to be technical to understand that um, we are all touched by the impacts of not having security in the cyber world, right? Yeah. Huge breaches and data data is taken away and, and used for other things. And, and so I, and, and I might be getting a little off track here, but kind of bringing it back, like I think for, you know, to, to bring more of that diversity, we need to to bring the cybersecurity conversation to a very personal level um, so that more and more people understand that, you know, as a consumer, and we're all consumers, as a consumer, we are touched by cybersecurity. Um, And so if you have an interest in protecting your own data, maybe then you have an interest in working for a company that that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, But speaking to it from much more of that day-to-day personal level, I think would be really helpful for individuals to really expand um, what cybersecurity really means to them personally. And then I think in the academic world, that's where it needs to start more is really um, offering classes, degree programs that are cybersecurity specific. And a lot of schools have them, but they're very technical. I think the business aspect of cybersecurity would be a great um, academic program in universities, because that's really going to teach you what that means. And, and that would be my hope is that it, it comes from there to sort of learn the whole aspect of what the business is so that you can decide if that's something that you're interested in, um, identifying whatever career it is, but in that industry and in that space. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think that what you've touched on is something incredibly important there. And that's that this stems, you know, way before we're talking about uh, kind of our, our adult working lives. It's it's the education system. And, you know, from the get go, teaching both male and females that um, you, you can do anything that you want to do and that there are so many different um like spaces out there that you can operate in cyber being one of them and there are so many right. different skill sets that are required to contribute to this this kind of cyber sphere that we're all in um so everyone can kind of play their part in you know stopping the bad guys and and ensuring that the people and businesses are being protected from from you know terrible things that are, that are happening um yeah so yeah it's it's yeah it's interesting for sure um yeah definitely (laughs) and I guess if I was to kind of round up then and you know just ask you for your kind of final thoughts on terms of if you've got one piece of advice that you were um going to leave us with in terms of uh if, if a female is is kind of looking to navigate her career in in cyber um what's that kind of one thing that you would say ladies if you're listening this is my my (laughs) best thing that you need to take from this conversation (laughs) oh gosh that is a a loaded question um (laughs) and I'm really trying to think right like what advice would I want to give myself or again (laughs) you know, if I, if I point to my kids, you know, what advice would I give them if they wanted to get into cybersecurity? And, and I think so much of it is, and I, I've kind of touched on it. I think it's curiosity. 
Um, mm-hmm. If it's a new area for you, be curious, ask the questions, do the research, find out what cybersecurity means yeah. as it relates to you on a personal level. And if mm-hmm. then you go, that's super interesting. And I do want to be in a company that is helping the world. Like our, our mission as a company is um, making the world a safer and fairer place. Right. And we're doing that through identifying these potential areas of risk for companies so that we are protecting their data. We're protecting our personal data. Like if, you know, if you're interested in that, if you, if that kind of piques your curiosity then go for it, but you have to be curious enough to find out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something I've taken actually, um, you know, throughout my, my experience is that you don't have to know everything. I think there's the stigma around if I don't know everything, I can't do it. And it's, it's not right. true. It's, it's, you know, it's the same with, with us as, you know, you use talent acquisition, me as an external recruiter, Absolutely, we have to have that curiosity to have an awareness of the companies that you know, you know that we're working with, or in your case, right. working for. But are you there to to be a, be a CISO? No, you're not. Are you, no. are you there to be the CRO? Absolutely not. So um, your expert is in recruiting. My expertise is also in in recruiting. So um, you know, you find that path that leverages your skill set. You can operate in cyber in so many different ways, but you do not have to know everything. That's why I really like actually the go-to-market space because you can be in cyber, but you can be in a role that you know is sales or it's customer success or it's marketing. And so maybe you're leveraging exactly. a slightly more creative, um, creative skill set, or perhaps a more kind of business savvy skill set, as opposed to being really technically focused in your in your job. So. Yeah, I like that there is so many different facets, but people just don't know about it. And if you just think cyber, exactly. you think, okay, I'll just go away. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, there are, there's so many different avenues. And if you just explore that, um, I think people will be surprised as to what they find. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, look, thank you so much for taking the time to... Um, be on this episode it's been really great to have your insight as well and um, uh, I'm sure that it's going to help a lot of individuals and and if there are individuals out there that are thinking of getting in cyber then certainly I'm sure they can be pointed towards coming to Vectra AI and taking a little look at the different types of roles you guys are recruiting Absolutely. for and, yeah pick your brain or, or pick my brain as well so so yeah no thank you very very much it's been lovely to have you here and um, yeah, I guess I will speak with you, I'm sure, not not in the too distant future. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode. I hope that you found it inspiring and insightful. I will be releasing each episode of this series on a bi-weekly basis. So if you've enjoyed what you've heard, please keep your eyes peeled for the next release. I've loved having you here today and look forward to having you on the next one.